I know what freedom smells like. It smells like pine trees shrouded in fog. Like the cold alpine air stinging your cheeks. I found this freedom in Washington, on the back of a Russian motorcycle, bound to a sidecar straight out of the Soviet era. I came here to Ural HQ to ride a Ural motorcycle, the famous sidecar bikes that have been made in Siberia since World War II. I had heard a lot about them. People called them indestructible, but I needed to find out for myself. I rode that bike up two-lane highways into the Olympic Mountains, through snowed-in logging trails, and over mud-soaked tracks. I strapped it to a ferry, rode it past fields of spearmint and caribou. If there was ever a place to push the limits of a motorcycle, Washington was as good as any. Contrary to popular belief, sidecars developed before World War I. Originally built for bicycles, they were added to motorcycles by the early 1900s as a cheap motorized transport for multiple passengers. But after World War II, cars became affordable, which meant that people upgraded. Many sidecar companies went belly up, except for Ural. In 2000, a Russian entrepreneur named Ilya Kate bought the brand, kept manufacturing in Siberia, and moved the headquarters to Redmond, Washington where fewer than a dozen employees devote countless hours to what they consider a passion project. There is nothing that makes me feel more connected to a machine than sidecar motorcycling. I don't know if it's the way that they handle the basic raw design of a Ural. It's like the two of you are melding together to create this perfect thing to travel. Well, I mean, I wouldn't speak for people, but for me, it's, you know, it's that freedom. It's just kind of getting out there. It's the adventure. It's going to unique destinations and, you know, being out in the air and just, you know, exposed somewhat. It's not only Ural employees who love these bikes. While I was in Seattle, I met eight other devoted Ural riders. The key to truly falling in love with your bike is customizing it and really making it your own. One rider named Tracy did it by using accessories that would have been appropriate during the brand's heyday in World War II. It's been painted and kitted out so well that she uses it in war reenactments. You can be in a sea of a hundred different Harleys and everybody wants to talk to the person with the Ural. It breaks the ice anywhere you go. You can't even stop to get gas without people running across the parking lot to talk to you. Here's the thing about Ural. It doesn't go anywhere fast, but it goes everywhere cool. In general, the Ural community is a tight-knit one, and it makes sense because the point of a sidecar bike is to use it with somebody. You are never far from your companion, but he or she is totally dependent on you, the driver. Whatever you choose to feel, he or she will feel it too. I rode the $13,000 Ural CT for three days. Riding it feels simultaneously more stable and wobblier than riding a normal motorcycle. You need strength to steer, and deceleration and cornering are lessons in physics. Instead of counterbalancing, which you do on a regular bike, you lean into the turn in order to force the third wheel down. It's liable to levitate on corners, which is fun once you expect it. Complaints? It's tough to find any. No, these aren't great for highway cruises, and they're more expensive than regular motorcycles. They're big to park and heavy to lift if you tip it over, and it's been done. And if you own one, it's going to force you to be social. No Lone Ranger attitude with these bikes. Everybody is going to want in on the fun. Thanks to that sidecar, passengers can chill alongside you, and their view is just as good as yours. I should warn you, though, at some moment when you're roaring through the woods, it'll hit you. You love this motorcycle. And really, what is love but true freedom indeed? <laughs>